Hi, I'm Rhonda Buss, and today we're going to talk about fabric choice for the Emily bag from the pattern company I Think So. You can see that my bag is made from a, a very nice heavyweight canvas fabric. The inside of the bag, um, I did customize it with um, a faux leather, and I also did a faux leather uh, handle as well as a faux leather bottom. Um, that is not, that is only a choice. As I said before, the bag will make a great shopping bag and something that, a fabric that I thought would be a really fun piece of fabric to use is this canvas with all the vegetables on it. Um, and for the lining, I found this fabric that's like lettuce. How much fun is that? Now this is just a quilting cotton. So if you're going to use something like this for the interior of the bag, you will need to interface it. You can also use a quilting cotton uh, for the exterior of the bag. And if you do, you need to use an interfacing for that as well because the bag would just be a little bit too flimsy otherwise. So if you use a canvas on the outside, you're good to go. On the outside, you're good to go. On the inside, if you use a cotton, um, my recommendation, um, an interfacing that I really like for projects like this is a nice woven um, interfacing that is a fusible. Um, it just works very, very nicely and it gives it the extra little bit of stability that it needs. Now, you can also customize it even further if you like. Um, I had this little piece of leather and I thought, wow, this would look really nice as a contrast with the fabrics. Um, and of course, like I said, with this, I used a faux leather. Um, but if you're using a real leather or a faux leather, either one, you treat them exactly the same. And if you're going to cut the handle and the bottom out of the leather, you'll take your pattern and you want to work from the back side of the leather. And one of the things that you want to pay attention to if you do use leather is because it is a natural skin, um, it will have imperfections in it. So you want to make sure that you look on the front side and if there are any imperfections that you can't live with, then you want to make sure that you don't cut in that area. So you just take your pattern piece and there's no grain on this. You just take your pattern piece. Now with the faux leather, there is a grain on this, so that you would need to cut on grain. But if it's a, a real leather, you don't need to. And you just hold your pattern down. And a good thing to do would be to use a ruler. So you get a nice straight edge. And use a pen. It doesn't, it's not something that's going to bleed through or that you'll need to worry about. And you just mark all the way around. We'll mark the final edge of our handle. And so now we have the rectangle drawn on here. Of course, remember that we need to cut two of these. So you would just place it again on the leather somewhere and cut two of them. Um, and again, just be sure that you don't use your good fabric shears for this. Um, you can use your, your paper scissors or a pair of scissors that are just a little duller that you're not going to be cutting silks out of. Now, with the handle, the handle is folded and I don't know if you can see this, but it is folded, so it is a, it's a very nice, sturdy handle. And whether it's leather or faux leather or fabric, now if it's fabric, you don't really need to worry about how you're pressing it so much. But with the faux leather, you want to be able to press it and then turn this, turn this, turn this in, and then as you can see, I stitched on either side of the handle. So in order to get a nice crisp guideline, take a 
pressing cloth. And if you'll notice, I doubled this one. I don't want to melt my fabric underneath. And lightly go over it. Don't let, it, don't let the iron sit on it for too long. And you'll have a nice guideline that you can then fold this in. Keep your pressing cloth doubled for all of this. Fold the other side in. And then once both the entire thing piece is pressed, all you have to do is fold this over, take it over to your machine, and then stitch about a quarter inch away from the edge and you'll have a very, very nice, strong handle for your bag. So once it's folded, now you can take this to your machine and do a nice stitch along either edge, uh, about a quarter inch from either edge, and it makes for a very nice, strong handle. Our next step will be adding a zipper pocket to the interior of the bag.